Hi and welcome to 90 Second Website Builder. This is Greg Hughes. This video is an overview of the software. I'm going to show you how to get around. If you're new to 90 Second Website Builder, this is a great place to start because we're just going to do a quick kind of general overview of where everything is. The first thing you see, of course, is this big blank area, which we call the canvas, like an artist canvas, because this is where you're going to design or build your website. You'll be placing objects out here like text objects and images and forms and shapes and all of the things that you need to create a web page or a website. And you do that, of course, by using all of the tools that are in the toolbox, which we show here on the left hand side of the screen. The workspace is kind of broken up into areas uh, made up of little windows or little pallets. Uh, let me move the camera a little bit so you can see on this side of the software, we have some other pallets like the site manager, the properties inspector. And one of the things you can do is you can kind of hover your mouse over these lines that separate these pallets and you can stretch things and move things around so that you have a little bit of uh, customization in your workspace. You can move things around, make things bigger and taller like this so that you can make it a little easier to work. But you can also literally undock or unpin some of these pallets. I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on the tab up here right next to where it says toolbox, click and drag, I can actually move this pallet. It's called a floating pallet now because I can put it wherever I want on the screen and work with these tools and just grab them, much like an artist would move his paint palette around, you can do the same thing if you need the space to do that. And then of course, if you want to dock it someplace else, you just grab it. I'm clicking on this and dragging it. And if I wanted to dock it up here at the top, I could do that. Or if I wanted to dock it on the bottom or the side or whatever, I'm going to put it back where it defaults, which is right here to the left hand side and put my toolbox right where I like it. Another thing you, you should know, because sometimes people do this by accident, so click this little close box and say, uh oh, my toolbox is all gone. Where did it go? And you can't see it anywhere on your screen. Well, it's good to know you can always go up to the view menu and toggle that right back on because there are several palettes that you can show or not show just by simply clicking these buttons. And so my toolbox is now gone. That's why it's unselected. I can just select it and bring it right back. So if you happen to close any of your palettes, just go up here to the view menu and bring them right back. Speaking of menus, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of different menus up here. And if you are used to an older version of 90 second website builder, version nine, the one we're looking at now is considerably different. This menu layout, which is called the ribbon style menu, um, looks a lot different. It's meant to be far more user friendly than older versions. And I think you're going to really like it. Of course, each of these menus are pretty standard. You have your home menu where you would manage your typical Windows tools like copy and paste and whatnot. This is where you click the publish button when you're ready to publish your website. We'll talk about that in a later video. In fact, there's videos about each of these sets of tools. The home menu is kind of some of the basic tools and more common tools you'll use as you're developing your website. There's the insert menu, which allows you to insert the very tools that are also listed here in the toolbox. It's just another way to get to the tools and they're broken into categories in a similar way. The page menu would do just what you would expect, allow you to work with pages, uh, renaming them, cloning them, all of the things that you can also do over in the site manager, which I'll show you in a second, get to the background properties of the page, etc. All of that can happen here in the page menu. Uh, the view we, look, we just looked at, we can view particular tools and particular palettes and windows that we want to work with, or you can hide them. If you want to hide the ruler, you can do that, or you can toggle it back on. The arrange menu is very helpful for when you have several objects on the page, you can align them, make sure they line up tops, bottoms, or whatever. You can group them. You can make sure that they are spread out evenly, horizontally, or vertically. Rotate things. That's what the arrange menu does. Again, here's the another tools menu that just gives you some more global tools to work with your website. Things like themes and extensions if you're using the full version. Um, there's a new a feature called animation in version 9, and the animation manager is here, as well as some of your overall uh, software options and customizations are found here. And then of course, maybe your most important menu when you're first getting started is this help menu where you can click this button and go to any of the documentation for the software at any time and literally look up um, help. It's all looks, it's kind of like an encyclopedia of 90 second website builder. Or you can you click either one of these buttons. If you click here, you'll go right online to our support page and clicking here will take you to our getting started videos on our website. So there's plenty of ways to get help under the help menu. 
Of course, the file menu is a little bit different. It still is a drop down sort of Windows style menu. This is where you save your project uh, or do a save as. This is where you can access the preview when you want to preview what you're doing in a uh, browser. And again, we'll go into each of these uh, functions in later videos. So let me show you something that's new again to this menu system. And this is really handy. If I grab the text tool, for example, and I make a text item, you'll see that a new set of menus has popped up at the top of the screen here. Since I'm working with a text item or a text object, we call it, I also have this new menu item. It actually has two submenus under it. So when I make text like this and say I wanted to edit this text, you'll notice that my menu has turned to the format menu. So I can format this text where I can select which font I'm going to use, how big it's going to be, its style, color, etc., the alignment. All of this has to do with formatting the text. And it, it appears automatically at the top of my screen simply because I am working now with the text object. So the software is smart enough to know that I'm going to need these tools when I choose this object. Now watch as I click away from it, it's no longer selected, and so that tool is not there because it's no longer needed. In fact, if I go get another tool, let's grab an image. If I was going to put an image right here, and I'll just click one here as an example. So here I have an image, and because this image is selected, which you can tell by the little boxes here around the corner, because this image is selected, my image tools formatting is right here where I can work with these tools in a very handy way. If I want to make this transparent, if I want to arrange this and move it, they're here. If I want to make a border for this image or add a special effect to it, all of the things you would expect to do with images are just very close at hand. Now you used to do this, if you're using version 8 or older, you would normally just double click on this object to get to these tools. Well, you can still do that. You'll notice as I double click, it still brings up the image properties window where I can adjust the link and the effects, the watermark, all of the events, everything that we used to have still here with the addition, and again, this is new for version 9, of some animation effects. We'll have a video about that later. But again, you can just double click and get to those properties. Or, like I said, because this object is selected, now you'll notice that my menu changes up here. So it's a great, fast way to get to the properties of any object you're working with. And it works for just about everything you'll find in the toolbox, whether you're working with a form or a shape, image text, etc. That's how the menus work now. So let's talk about some of the other things here on the canvas. I'm going to move the camera way over here so you can see what's on the other side of the screen. Now the site manager is a little bit different because it shows you kind of a bird's eye view of the entire website. Now in my case, I have just an empty untitled website here. And so my site manager is telling me that, that I've got a project here that I haven't titled yet. This is where I'll see all of the pages in my website. And right now, of course, I only have one. We always start with an index page. As I add pages to my website, it will be added here to the site manager so that I can bounce around from page to page. So for example, I want to add a new page to this project. I can do that in a number of ways. I can click the icon here that says new page, or I can right click down here and I can go new page, or I can go over to the page menu and do that. I think it's just easy just to click this button here and make a new page. And so now I have two pages in my website, an index page, that's the default, and then a page here that defaults to page one. And you'll notice over here on the canvas, I now have two tabs because I have two pages this first one and this second one that I just started. I can even close this page so that I don't want it to appear out here on the canvas if I want to. But the site manager still lists that page because it's part of my website. So as we grow our website, the site manager is where we manage these pages. It's where we create pages. It's where we rename them. I can actually delete a page from here or clone a page, which will be very handy. You'll see later. That means copy an entire page. And you'll find that this is really, really an important part of the software to be able to manage your entire website at the click of a button. Below the site manager is the properties inspector. As I said before, I can stretch things. I'm going to move this up so you can see a little bit better. The properties inspector shows me the attributes of every object, or I should say any object, I want to see the attributes of. Right now, it's showing me the attributes of the page. Now, since this particular project only has two things on it, remember I made a text object right here, and I've got an image object right here. So I really only have three things to work with, text, image, and the page itself is an object. 
So when I go to the properties inspector window and I pull this thing down, you'll see there's three things I could look at. Right now I'm looking at the properties of the page or I could look at the properties of the image by doing that. I pulled down to it and now everything down here is about the image. Here I can change its opacity, its position, its size. Of course, I can also do that by dragging and dropping and stretching, but if you wanted to do it mathematically, you could do it here. I can change the alt text, even the angle at which it displays, all the reflection, everything that has to do with the image is shown here in the properties inspector and can be adjusted manually by just me typing in or using these menus. Same thing with the text. As I pull down and I look at the properties of the text object that's on my page, here I can change a lot of things about, about it. It's background mode from transparent to any one of these other options, etc. The angle, the padding, if there's a border, all of the things that have to do with the text object can be edited here in the properties inspector. So that shows you that there are a lot of ways to get to the tools and the uh, uh, aspects and settings of everything you're working with here in 90 Second Website Builder as you build your website. I wanna show you behind the scenes a little bit of how your website files are saved on your computer. The number one technical issue people have is sometimes they forget where their files are, where they've saved them. And I'm going to show you how that works. First of all, it's important to know that when you're building a website with a software, your project is just one file, but it's your entire website. It's called a WBS file. The name of your project, whatever you name it, dot WBS is the name of the file on your computer. Now that one project file contains all of your website, no matter how many pages are on your website, you still have one project, your index page, and all of the other pages, all of the images, all of the objects on your page are all contained in this one project. When you go to save your project, which I haven't done yet, remember mine's still called untitled. And so what I highly recommend is that you keep all of your 90 second website builder project files in the same place. And I recommend keeping them in your my documents folder. Here's what I mean. If I click save, I happen to be here in my doc, in my my documents folder. Inside my documents is a folder called 90 second website builder. Now that was put there by the software when you installed it on purpose. It's there to help you organize your files. So I'm going to double click and go inside. Now in my case, I have a number of WBS files. You can see these are all different websites. Every one of these is a different website. You see it's called a WBS file. But as you save your projects, you're going to want to save them in this folder called 90 Second Website Builder, which is inside your My Documents folder. It's a very important place because not only will it contain your website files, meaning your website projects called WBS, but it also creates what's called an assets folder. So each website that you create, the software creates an assets folder of the same name. So here I created a website called 24 seven web talk. That's what I named it. This is my WBS project. The software, as I did that created a folder, an assets folder of the same name called 24 seven web talk. And what it does is it stores important things for my project, like images and all of the things that I've drug out into my project. I never need to go in here and you don't need to either. You can go in and look if you want to, but it's just there for the software to use to help me organize the files sort of behind the scenes. What's important for you is to know that this is where your projects are being stored. Since I haven't saved this particular project that I've opened up now, here's how I would do it. I would go file, save. Remember that's different than save as. Save as means save another copy. So in this case, I would just do save my website. I want to make sure I'm in my, my documents folder. Let me go up here and show you where I'm at. Here's my, my documents folder. Inside there is the 90 second website builder folder. That's where I'm at. And I'm going to save this new project that I'm working on here, which defaults to untitled one. I'll call it demo. And once I do that, I click save. And now I have a project called demo inside that particular folder. If you forgot where you kept your file, here's one great feature. When you first open up the software, when you go up to the file menu, it will show you a list of your most recent documents. So if I wanted to go back to the last project I was working on, it'll be listed here in this recent documents. And as you can see, mine was demo, of course. And so I would just click here and it would open up that particular project. So hopefully that gives you kind of a bird's eye view, uh, an overview of the software. It's a great place to start. So now you know where everything is. Just play with all the tools and see what they do. Maybe make a demo uh, project of your own, one that you can learn with. And as you learn, be sure to follow the video tutorials in the series and that will really help you get started on the right foot using this great software we call 90 Second Website Builder.